In this video, I'll take you through the steps involved in creating a multilingual virtual assistant with Watson Assistant and the Watson Language Translator service. To get started, um, I've already built a virtual assistant with Watson that we'll take a quick look at now uh, to see that when we open the assistant that it's been built with uh, the sample customer care uh, skill that comes with any new instance of Watson Assistant. Uh, if I click into that, you'll see that the intents here um, that are used to train the virtual assistant are all defined in English. And then if we take a look at the virtual assistant itself, you'll see that it greets us in English. And if we ask the query in, where are you located in English, you'll see that we also get a response in English. Um, now let's look at the steps that are involved to allow this virtual assistant to take, let's say, queries in Spanish and then also um, return responses to the end user in Spanish without making any changes to the uh, virtual assistant itself. We can do that um, following the steps in my GitHub repository here um, where I've included some uh, sample code and the steps I guess involved to allow us um, build out using cloud functions and the language translator service um, a multilingual uh, virtual assistant. The steps are really simple. There's actually only just a handful of them that we need to follow. And the first of those um, has us looking at uh, Cloud Functions. So we can use the sample translate.js file that I provide here to create two new uh, Cloud Functions on IBM Cloud. These Cloud Functions are used to make calls to the uh, Language Translator service. Um, and we'll see how that uh, hangs together in just a moment. But for now, if I copy the source that's available here, and if I go back to my IBM Cloud account, and go into um, functions. And from here, I'm going to create a new action. I'll give this um, action a name of Spanish to English translate. Let's call it that with a node 12 runtime and go ahead and click on create. Uh, once that's created for me, I can just select this text here and paste in uh, the sample code that I got just a moment ago from my GitHub repository. Things that we need to update here then are the API key for the language translator service, uh, the service URL for the language translator service, and also this model ID. Um, I should have mentioned a moment ago, actually on my IBM Cloud account, if I go back to that, I'll need to now. Um, so if I go back to uh, cloud.ibm.com, we'll need to get some of those details that I just mentioned from the language translator service that I've created uh, previously. So if I go to services here, and I go to language translator, and from here, when this page loads, I can go to service credentials, and I'm just gonna work with these uh, auto-generated service credentials that I got when the service instance was created um, earlier. So I've copied the API key, go back to um, my Cloud Functions, right back here, and paste that in here. Uh, I also need to get the service URL, so back here, get this service URL here, copy across to here, copy, and drop it in here. And then the last thing I need to update I mentioned is this um, model ID. This model ID tells the language translator service uh, what the source la uh, language is gonna be for translation, so what the source is and what we want to translate it to. In this instance, I want to translate it from um, Spanish to English. So sorry, that's ES to EN. And, and actually, if you're looking for details of the supported languages for Watson Assistant, back from the tutorial here, I think, do, do, yeah, on this step, you'll see there's a link off to the set of um, supported languages. If I click into that, you'll see it the, in the documentation for the language translator service. Um, this uh, Cloud Function now, I go back to it here, is one that I can go ahead and save. And then an important step that I need to follow is that I need to expose this uh, Cloud Function as a web action. And I do that by going to the Endpoints tab here, and I enable it as a web action. Enabling, it as web app, enabling the Cloud Function as a web app action allows us um, easily make calls to the Cloud Function via this uh, URL that's been exposed here. So when I click Save, I can copy this URL, and I need to make a note of that because I'm going to have to use that again um, in a moment. So let's just drop that into a new file here. 
Um, I'm going to have to perform those same set of steps for another cloud function action that's going to be used to translate from English to Spanish. So rather than me have you uh, watch me you know, copy and paste and update the file again, let me just go ahead and do that now and I'll come back to you in just a moment. Okay, so at this point, I've gone ahead and created another um, Cloud Functions action. This time, it's um, to support uh, translation from English to Spanish. I've exposed that as a web action, um, and I need to copy this URL here and make a note of it, uh, as I did before. I guess really the only difference between this web action and the other one is the and the, the one created just a moment ago is this uh, model ID is um, from English to Spanish, where previously it was from Spanish to English. Otherwise, this is the same um, action. If we go back to uh, the instructions that we have here then on GitHub, let's see what else we need to do next. So we've gone ahead and we've um, created our cloud functions. We've updated those with the language translator API key and URL uh, as outlined here. And we've exposed them as the web actions as detailed here. Um, the next thing we'll need to do then is work with this translate.html file. And it's in here that we use um, the web chat UI that's available from Watson Assistant. And it's also in here that we customize these events that are available with the web chat UI, um, this pre-send and pre-receive uh, set of events. So let's have a look at the translate.html file now. If I go and um, click into that, and if I copy the source for the sample that I've made available online, copy this to here. And if I go back to uh, my text editor, let's do a new file and save this as file, save as translate.html. Um, I want to put this. So with the file saved then as translate.html, um, there's some changes that we need to make to uh, this file to allow it um, load a web chat UI that can act as um, the user interface to the virtual assistant that we've built um, when hosted in a web page. But that also has these customized uh, handlers that allow us make the calls out to the language translator service to translate both the input from the end user and the response from what's an assistant. Uh, so the values that we need to update here are the integration ID, the region, and the service instance ID for Watson Assistant. So if I go back to um, uh, IBM Cloud and my IBM Cloud account here, I'll need to go and open again the um, Watson Assistant service that I had opened just a moment ago. So from what's an assistant here, if I click into the assistant and go into the web chat um, option here and go into this embed tab here, I should be able to get the values that I need from uh, here. So I've got this integration ID that I need to work with, paste in here. I'm going to get the region, that's EUDE. -E. E -E that. And then the service instance ID that's available here, I copy that across paste it in here, um, we should be good for now. The next um, changes, set of changes that we'll need to make then are with the, uh, the handlers that I mentioned earlier. And it's here that we use those URLs to the um, web actions for each of our Cloud Functions actions that we created a moment ago. So I have two URLs, one from Spanish to English. So we copy this. And if you think of the flow here, we want to be able to take input from the end user and um, that input is going to be uh, written uh, by the end user in Spanish, and it's going to be translated before it ever hits Watson Assistant. And so Spanish to English is what we'll use, and we'll use that in the uh, pre-send handler. So I'm going to paste over this CFM point value here. I'm going to paste in, and I'm going to save, and I'm going to go back to uh, my saved values here as well. I'm going to copy this English to Spanish um, value here, and I'm going to paste over in the pre-receive hang handler that value um, and save. So at this point, actually, what I should be able to do now is load this translate.html file in a browser. And I should see that um, the virtual assistant now loads in Spanish rather than English and can answer questions in Spanish too.
So when I click the web chat launcher that's located in the bottom right hand of the page here, you should see that when the uh, virtual assistant loads now, rather than the greeting being in uh, English as it was when we saw it in the try it out pane earlier, we see that it's actually now translated to Spanish, um, but that's still the same virtual assistant that's in English on the Watson assistant side of things. And then to ask it a question, to ask the assistant a question in Spanish, I have this example here because I don't speak Spanish, um, but this should mean um, where are you located, which is the question that I asked in English earlier. And we were told about I think Union Square was the answer or something along those lines. And so if I paste that in and ask the question of what's an assistant in Spanish, you'll see that we get you know, the same answer back, only this time the response is being translated um, uh, to Spanish, uh, the language of the end user. So I hope um, you found that uh, useful. Again, all the information you need is contained in this GitHub repository of mine earlier. I'll embed this video that I'm recording now into the repository so that you'll have it uh, in here too, to be able to follow along. And um, thanks for your time.